So I'm a little bit nervous to make this video. Today we're in the comfort of my living room and I'm gonna talk about my experience being half Chinese and half French living in Sweden and also in Canada and just in general. My name is Maribel and I currently live in Sweden. I was born in Western Canada. So my dad was born in Northern France and he obviously speaks French and English. My mom was born in Vietnam, but she's Chinese. Um, so my mom was born in Saigon. They left after the war. My mom can speak a lot of languages. She can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, Vietnamese and English. And she does actually understand a bit of French when my dad speaks, like she knows what he's saying. My native language is obviously English. À la maison, je parlais français avec mon père, mais c'était plus Fringlish. So yeah, we spoke lots of Fringlish. My dad would speak French to us and then we would kind of answer in English. And it still is kind of like that to this day. I've lost a lot of my French, unfortunately, but I'm trying to like get it back. <laughs> But yeah, French is a really difficult language. Um, but even more difficult than that is Cantonese. I don't understand Mandarin at all, but I can understand Cantonese. But my mom was away a lot, so we didn't get that much of an opportunity to speak Cantonese that often. So it was mainly just French and English. Personally, I'm not that great with languages. Um, it's really hard for me to pick up languages just in general. Some people are really great at it, like my mom and my older sister, but like I'm, I'm just not one of those people. Even French sometimes, like it's, it, like I, it's really difficult. And right now I'm trying to learn basic Swedish and it's really hard. So do I have a Chinese name? Yes, I do. Um, I knew how to spell it when I was younger, but it's been years since I've spelt it. I remember like little bits of it, but I don't remember all of it, which is super unfortunate. I have to ask my mom again, but I'm kind of embarrassed to ask her because I feel like she'll get mad at me. My first name, but then if I were to say it, my surname, it'd be Yang Lo Yi. That's the name my mom gave me. Um, my, my Western name, my dad named me. He gave all of us our like English names, but technically my name isn't English. So like I said in the beginning of this video, my name is Mary Bell. That's just how I say my name just like in English. The way that my dad named me is Marie Belle. So that's how you actually say my name, Marie Belle. A lot of people think it sounds very Southern, like Southern American, <laughs> which I can see why it sounds, it, it does sound Southern. Um, and I have never really met anyone with my name, only one person when I was like 11 years old. I met one little girl with, my name with exactly the same spelling. It was like a monumental moment for me because I had never met anyone with my name that I still to this day remember her. As for how I identify myself, I would definitely say that I'm, a, I'm, I'm for sure a mixed girl. I identify as both French and Chinese not really more one than the other. I really feel like I'm like a mesh of both. And for whatever reason with other people, it's just not enough to identify as both. Like people tend to want you to pick one or the other. Almost any mixed person will probably relate to this. Sometimes people get stuck on their perception of what they think you are. How Europeans see me versus you know, Canadians, at least in Sweden, no one really mentions it to me. Here in Sweden, they're, they are never like, what are you? But in Canada, that is a very common thing to get asked. If you're a mix, what are you? One time when I was doing a um, motion capture, uh, well, it was more like facial capture for a video game. I went in and I at the time I had like, it was like titanium hair. I walked in and there was an Asian girl that was sitting there and she was super nice. Um, and she just kind of asked me what I was, like what my background was. I said, I'm half Chinese and she was Chinese. And she was like, what? I, I thought you were Japanese just because you're like a walking, you look like a walking video game character. The conversation just kind of got weird after that. Like it, it was, it just veered into a whole different thing about what I looked like and like picking apart my features and it just kind of got uncomfortable for me. She was really lovely though. I don't blame her, but like, yeah. 
it's just really interesting. Um, I also had a friend who had known me for years and thought I was like Spanish or something, like Latina, and I was just kind of like, no, I'm half Asian. If people say, oh, but you don't look like what your background is, then it can feel a bit insulting sometimes, um, but it depends on my mood. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I know, I don't really look like either of them, but I have a DNA test to prove it. If it's kind of a microaggression or like, I don't know, if it's said in a way that's kind of, uh, that just kind of rubs me the wrong way, I don't really love it. Um, and I'm sure a lot of mixed people or, or even like just people of color in general can relate to that. And not everyone can see what my background is, but I always appreciate it when people are like, you know, you're mixed, aren't you? Or, or like something, you know, like just kind of acknowledging like all of me. Like I really love it when people acknowledge like, ah, yes, you're both these things and that's great. Okay, so in Sweden, uh, at least where I live, in the city I live, um, there's like a few like sushi restaurants and like two uh, Chinese restaurants, one in particular and then one like more fast food. I, there might be another one, but I'm not sure. But it's really hard to find here. I'm like super missing dim sum so much. Me and my family, every Saturday we used to go to dim sum. My mom would bring us to this really tiny dim sum restaurant that was, it, it felt kind of dirty, like the, like the restaurant in general wasn't the cleanest, but the food was so good. I miss the cha siu bao, but like, the vegetarian version because I don't eat meat anymore. <laughs> that was another thing, becoming a vegetarian. There's lots of meat in both French cuisine and Chinese cuisine. So it was kind of an adjustment for my family to, you know, have somebody who doesn't eat meat in the family. So they always kind of include like a vegetarian version of a dish that I love. But yeah, lunch boxes growing up. So whenever my mom made food i remember I, I feel bad about it to this day but i remember feeling embarrassed about the food that she would make even if i loved it even if it was like like something that i really loved like sticky rice <laughs> i often got comments and um, kids would be like, I would open my lunchbox and like the second i opened my lunchbox someone would be like ew what's that smell and so I'd close it and I'd maybe take like a few bites, but then I'd close it and then eat like whatever fruit or snack was in my lunchbox. As a kid, it was really embarrassing to have my classmates and bullies and just people making comments about the food that I ate. And it was different because I went to a, um, a French school growing up and if my dad made something, like my dad was uh, in culinary arts, when he was younger. Despite my dad being French, like he never made things like boeuf bourguignon or like uh, escargot or whatever. Like the, that's not what he would make. Sometimes he would make like pate sandwiches, but no one really made a comment because pate doesn't really smell. And also that school was full of French kids. So they didn't care about that stuff, but they definitely cared about the, the Chinese food that they thought was gross and smelly. And sometimes kids would like look at my lunchbox and be like, ew, what's that? It was always whenever my mom made something. So I remember just being like, like, can dad just make the food? Or mom, can you just make like a sandwich? Or like, can we buy Lunchables so that, you know, the kids don't say anything about it? And I think she kind of got the memo that, you know, that kids would make comments about the food. So she would start making sandwiches. Uh, they were very interesting sandwiches. Like she really got creative with those sandwiches. Common questions that I get asked is how did my parents meet? Long story short, my mom worked for my dad's dad, so my grandpa. And uh, one day my dad went into that company for some reason, probably to see his dad or something. And that's kind of how they met. This was all in Canada. Um, a lot of the times people ask questions like, are you more white or are you more Asian? And I always say I'm both. <laughs> I also get, do you feel more Asian or white? I mean, both, but also sometimes I feel like, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that to be honest, because 
I am who I am and I like what I like and I don't really know if that fits into like a, a category. Uh, people will ask if I've ever been to China or France and I say no and then they go, oh, how dare you? Or at least I feel like they're like that. Sometimes they look pretty shocked, but like, I mean, I, I don't know. That opportunity hasn't happened yet, um, but it might at some point. Do I feel like I fit in in Sweden? Definitely not. <laughs> Just in terms of like my looks and stuff like that. Like I, I know I don't look like everybody here and um, I'm okay with that because I'm kind of used to it. And in Sweden here, the city that I live in, um, there are a lot of people of color, but it's not that common that there are Asians here. I'll, I'll see, I'll, I'll spot an Asian person like, you know, once in a blue moon. I, so I've never really felt like I blend in, but when I was a kid, I wasn't really aware that I looked any different from anyone else. Like I, you know, I had no concept of, of, of that sort of thing. Um, it wasn't until I got my first like racist experience that, that sort of changed but yeah as as a small kid I, I had none of those things that like i didn't feel those things i feel like i should stop this video before it gets too long but i just want to say there's still so much i can talk about with this and like even like my background um my family history like there's still so much information that like you guys don't know that i don't have time to like go into but there are so many pros there are a few cons with everything, you know, in life, but like with being mixed race, lots of pros, some cons. Uh, I've had narrow-minded people. Hopefully there's none of that in the comment section for this video, but um, who knows? I've had these sorts of people say things like mixing races is bad because it causes identity issues. And uh, to that, I. I would say, okay, sure, but like I was born a twin and I have identity issues because of that. Are you gonna tell me that being a twin, just we just shouldn't have twins on the planet? Twins just shouldn't happen? Like, no, you're probably not gonna say that. So it's kind of, you know, it doesn't, I'm just kind of like, well, sure, we might have identity issues, but that's for us to figure out and to find ourselves and all of us, every single human on this planet has some type of issue. So personally, I think as a biracial person myself, I think it's a beautiful thing. I love that I was so immersed in different cultures and um, in two polar opposite cultures. I get to celebrate things like the mid-autumn festival and lunar new year and you know, lantern festival. And I think that's great. I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, let's just be nice to each other. I appreciate you getting to the end of this video. If you have, then leave a comment of a hmm, maple leaf. I will see you guys in the next video. Much love guys. Bye.